So the workup of chronic fatigue syndrome can involve a lot of different testing and uh, unless you uh, know what you're looking for, uh, a lot of those tests will come out normal and you'll look at people and say, well, there's nothing that I can find that's abnormal about you. Um, one of the things that's uh, commonly abnormal in people with uh, myalgic encephalitis, chronic fatigue syndrome, long COVID or related conditions um, would be uh, vascular endothelial growth factor. Um, this is supposed to be uh, due to the interaction between white blood cells and the uh, blood vessel wall. And uh, the interactions uh, in uh, this area uh, that are abnormal with elevated levels of VEGF uh, uh, can lead to migraines as a, a major symptom. Uh, edema, so swelling in the legs or specific places in the body can also happen when you have elevated level of VEGF. And it's one of the things that's easy to see going down as people improve with uh, chronic fatigue syndrome. Uh, IL-10, interleukin-10 is another big uh, um, interleukin in uh, people with chronic fatigue syndrome. And uh, that is actually a direct uh, product or can be a direct product of Epstein-Barr. Uh, the virus itself makes this anti-inflammatory um, uh, cytokine in order to reduce the white blood cells ability to respond to Epstein-Barr virus infections. Quite an interesting cycle that it creates. But the uh, white blood cells themselves and other agents can also produce uh, IL-10 in order to cover up their own uh, uh, tracks and not be uh, uh, traced uh, by white blood cells. Uh, uh, lymphocyte subset panels are often uh, abnormal in people who have chronic fatigue syndrome and more commonly in people who have uh, elderly fatigue and are uh, nearing the ends of their lives. Um, and you can see certain uh, abnormalities in both the uh, subsets, the distribution of the number of uh, the white blood cells, but also in the uh, natural killer function uh, of the uh, white blood cells. Lactic acid levels can be abnormal uh, because the mitochondria are not functioning well. Uh, the body does not go through the normal way of making energy, and instead it makes energy uh, anaerobically uh, with lactic acid as the leftover product, which is uh, considered uh, a potential culprit for a lot of the symptoms uh, that people feel with chronic pain and fatigue syndromes. Um, there are multiple tests that you can obtain to check for the presence of uh, dormant viruses and uh, parasites and atypical bacteria and fungi and mycobacteria in the system. You can look at IgG antibodies, which are indicative of exposure. Uh, and also you can look at IgM antibodies, which are indicative of either acute uh, infection or reactivation of an old infection. You can look at for uh, IgE um, antibodies, which are the antibodies uh, made in the setting of um, uh, allergic responses. And you can look at for IgA antibodies, which on some levels uh, some of these uh, viral uh, antigens in the IgA form can be indications of them creating cancer. Uh, so, uh, uh, for example, EBV IgA uh, is uh, considered to be a marker for nasopharyngeal carcinoma. Uh, and uh, there are also high avidity antibodies, which are the antibodies that would be formed in your body if you were able to deal with uh, an infection appropriately, uh, then you would find these high avidity antibodies that tell you, yep, this person definitely had the infection, but they um, produce the final set of antibodies that we produce when we recover from an, an infection successfully. And yes, this person has those, therefore this is not their problem. 
So a lot of things that we can do to try to figure out why uh, someone has chronic fatigue, what is the underlying problem, so that instead of just putting band-aids on the problem, we can actually solve it.